Another tool we have to help us solve equations is the multiplication property of equality. Okay, so here, this says the same non-zero real number may multiply both sides of an equation without changing the equation's solution set. Actually, just without changing the solution set, of course we're changing the equation, right? The original equation is a solution set won't change either, no matter what I do to it. But the key here is uh, I'm not changing the solution set by multiplying both sides. Again, to make this easier or shorter, a equals b and a times c equals b times c are equivalent equations. So long as c is not equal to zero. And really, we just want c to be a number here. Uh, while we can and sometimes will multiply algebraic expressions to both sides of an equation, we may change the solution set or introduce new solutions. Uh, so we don't really want to do that. And for what we're up to right now, this is strong enough. I can take any real number, multiply it on both sides of an equation, and not change the solution set, have equivalent equations. Similarly, since multiplying by a non-zero number, uh, or since I can divide by a number by multiplying by its reciprocal, so long as that original number isn't zero, a equals b and a divided by c equals b divided by c are equivalent equations. Again, so long as c is not equal to zero. Here, we don't only lose uh, our equivalent equations by dividing by zero, we can't do it. It's naughty, it's bad. So we can't divide by zero, but we can divide both sides of an equation by any real number and still get any non-zero real number and still have equivalent equations. Okay, for example, let's say I want to solve the uh, x divided by eight equals two. So I really wish this was x equaled something. So I have x divided by eight. Uh, in order to undo that, I'm going to multiply this by eight. Okay, if I multiply that by eight, uh, whatever number was there will be left. Because if I divide it by eight and then multiply it by eight, I'll be left where I started. And my multiplication property says I have to do that on the other side as well. Okay, so I multiply both sides of this equation by eight. Eight times x divided by eight will be x. Okay, those undo each other. If you're not sure why, pick any number, like 17. Eight times 17 divided by eight is 136 divided by eight is 17. I think I did that right. Uh, but whatever number you pick, if you multiply by eight and then divide by eight, you'll get back where you started. Eight times two is very much 16. Okay, so this guy has the solution set 16. 16 is the solution to that. It's the only solution. Since that equation is equivalent to this one, this equation up here must also have the solution set of 16. Okay, and I can check 16 divided by 8 is in fact 2. That is a true equation. So 16, or the set containing 16, 
is the solution set of x divided by 8 equals 2. Okay, let's check out another one. I want to solve negative 4x equals 36. Now this time, I'm going to use that fact that I can divide both sides by the same thing, same real non-zero number, and keep the same solution set. So I'm going to divide by negative 4. Okay, I'm going to divide by negative 4 uh, because when I take a number times negative 4 and then divide that by negative 4, I'm going to end up back where I started. So this side of my equation will just be x, and 36 divided by negative 4 is negative 9. I can verify that on my calculator or by looking back at my 9 multiplication charts. But 36 divided by negative 4 gives me negative 9. So I've got this guy whose solution is definitely negative 9. He's equivalent to this guy, so that guy's solution must be negative 9. I can check. Is negative 4, oops, back here. Is negative 4 times negative 9 equal to 36? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 9 is 1836. Definitely 36. So yes, that's true, which means that that's my... Uh, solution, or negative 9 satisfies negative 4x equals 36. Okay, cool. How about here? Here's 3 fourths times x equals 12. So to solve this equation, I'm going to need to, looks like divide, right? I have 3 fourths times x. Don't want that. So I'm going to divide that by 3 fourths. And this equals 12. And I need to divide that by 3 fourths. Okay. 3 fourths times whatever number that is divided by 3 fourths will just be that number. So I'm multiplying and then dividing by the same thing. Uh, over here, this is 12. Now, I need to remember, think back to fractions. If I'm dividing by a fraction, I could multiply by the reciprocal. So this is 12 times 4 thirds. Then if I need to go back a little farther, remember this is 12 over 1 times 4 over 3. I have the ability to cancel here. So this is x equals 4 over four, 4 over 1 times 4 over 1 cuz x equals 16 firsts so 16 so my equivalent equation in fact all these equations were equivalent they all have the same solution set this solution set x equals 16 and again that must mean that this guy way down there has solution x equals 16, and we can check, so let's do so. 3 fourths of 16. Well, 16 divided by 4 is, 16 divided by 4 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, so this is equal to 12, and 16 is my root of this equation. 16 is a root of 3 fourths x equals 12 because it's a root of x equals 16. Okay, one more here. I've got 5x divided by 8 equals negative 35. Now, there are two ways to solve this one. Uh, I'm going to take the easy way out first, which is actually harder arithmetic-wise, and then I'll do the harder but easier arithmetic way second. Harder to see, but easier to do. Uh, well, I want to get that x by itself. I wish this was just x equals something, because then I would know the solution to that. And keeping all my guys equivalent, I know the solution to my original. So, what I can do here... I sure wish this wasn't divided by 8. So, I could multiply both sides by 8. 
Okay, so 5x divided by 8, and then that times 8 will give me back just this 5x. Over here, negative 35 times 8 is negative something. Uh, 35 times 2 is 70. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, so 70 times 4 is 280. So this is negative 280. And now, again, I wish this was just x, but now I have 5 times x. So I could divide that guy by 5. Again, to keep my equations equivalent, I need to divide this guy by 5. Notice I didn't rewrite this uh, this time, because I just wanted to keep going. Uh, and that's all right, especially using different colors. If you've got a pen with a bunch of colors, this is a great way to do it. Uh, if not... The showing all of your work, all of your steps, if that's something you're into, you might want to copy down uh, and write this as your next step. But we know where it came from because we're watching a video, so that should be all right here. Uh, 5 times x divided by 5 had better give me x back. And then negative 280 divided by 5 must be 56, positive 56. Let me double check that is right in my head. 5 goes into 28 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. That would leave me 30 left over. 5 goes into 36 times. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I got 56. x is equal to 56 here. And since this equation is equivalent to that one way up there, this guy must have that solution as well. And let's see. Let's see if it does. So I got, oh, I, I made a sign mistake. Did I ever tell you that everyone makes sign mistakes and it's something really important to watch out for uh, because the difference between 100 degrees and negative 100 degrees is quite large? Well, I made a sign mistake and let me tell you where I saw it. So I knew that I got a positive answer down here. I was coming up to check it. If I put a positive number in here for x and then take it times 5 and divide it by 8, I'm definitely not going to get a negative number. So I glance through my work here and I see I didn't follow the multiplication property of equality. I decided I was going to divide by two different guys right at this step. That was a bad life choice. And it makes the equation sad because it's no longer equivalent to that one that I had. It's still an equation. It still has solutions. We found a solution to a new equation, but it's not the one that I was working with. So in fact, here I should have divided this side by negative 5 because that's what I divided the other side by. Did I say negative 5? I should have divided it by positive 5, not negative 5, because I divided the other side by 5. That would have instead given me a negative 56. So now let's make sure that that's right. So x is negative 56. 5 times negative 56 divided by 8. I want to know, is that negative 35? Well, negative 56 divided by 8 is negative 7. And negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. All right, we got it. Negative 56 is a solution of 5x over 8 equals negative 35. Great. Awesome. Excellent. Now, the question is, how could I have solved that the other way? Right? I mentioned there were two ways to solve it. Maybe if I do it the other way, I won't make a sign mistake. So here's that equation again. And the other way that I can solve this is by recognizing that the coefficient on this x it's actually 5 eighths. And if you're not convinced, let me see if I can convince you. Uh, 5 over 8 times x over 1 would certainly give me 5x over 8. So this is the same as 5 eighths times x. So that's 5x over 8. So 5 eighths is really the coefficient on that x. Now, how does that make this easier? 
Well, it makes it a little easier in the way that now I can just divide both sides by 5 eighths. So let me recopy and do that. I can just divide by 5 eighths and divide this by 5 eighths. So this is x, oops, this is x, 5 eighths times x divided by 5 eighths. This is negative 36 times, oh sorry, 35. I wasn't going to make a sign mistake, instead I decided I'd write down the wrong problem to do. Negative 35 times 8 fifths. I can put this over 1, I can do some simplifying. That's a 7, that's a 1, and I've got x equals negative 7 first times 8 firsts, which x is negative 56 then. Okay. Just like we got on the other side, so I won't, won't check it. But again, this is equivalent to my original equation, so this is my solution. All right, thanks for checking it out. Sorry for the two mistakes, but... Hey, I'm human too. I make sign mistakes sometimes. I just want to stress, like, I was able to catch it. You can, be, you can catch it too. Just do that check. I knew right away when I looked, oh, if I take this po <laughs> positive number and divide it, I'm not going to get a negative number. All right, thanks.